Welcome to Inside EKU Sports, a new production of EKU Athletics. We're about to begin the 104th season of Eastern Kentucky University football, and Mark Elder is the 14th coach all time at Eastern. And Mark, I know since you got the job in December, it has been a whirlwind. Uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the, the very start of it was very hectic, obviously, with getting ready to, to be the head coach here and, and having a new team and recruiting and, and putting a staff together while still coaching in the bowl game, doing double duty. That was a very, very busy time. Not a, not a lot of sleep at, during that time, but, uh, but it was exciting. And, and then it's been a great experience going through recruiting, going through all of spring and, and getting things installed and, and really getting to shape this team the way that we want it to be done. And uh, summer's been outstanding as well and, and heading into the fall all feel really good about this team and the progress that we've made and the identity that we're we're taking on right now in a nutshell what's your philosophy that, about what a college football team should be well we're going to be a tough disciplined football team uh, we're going to play with tremendous effort and those things are kind of the standard that must be set and laid and and those things are more important than what we're doing schematically on offense schematically on defense those things uh, really are secondary being a tough football team, mentally and physically tough, that's extremely important. Playing with tremendous effort, every single play, playing with top level effort, uh, that's extremely important. And then being a disciplined football team, those things are, are our standards. And whether we're running the triple option or a, a shotgun, no huddle offense, that stuff will take care of itself when we do those things well. When, when we're defensively, whether we're 3 4, 4 3, cover 3, cover 4, if we play tough with effort and discipline, we're going to be a pretty good football team. Everybody that's been out to practice sees the energy at practice, and that is a precursor to what we'll see on the field. For you personally, 16 years as an, an assistant coach, uh, you build towards maybe this day. You went to nine bowl games. What did you learn the most through those 16 years as an assistant, many of them to Butch Jones at places like Cincinnati and Tennessee? I was very fortunate to be around some great men, uh, other assistants that were outstanding, uh, work with and for several very good head coaches. Um, obviously, the last nine years, I've, I've been under Coach Jones. Uh, but even before working for Coach Jones, I worked under three National Coach of the Year award winners. So had the good fortune to be around great coaches and learned a lot from all of those guys. And, and really, I'd say the thing that's most important as a coaching staff is, is the preparation, uh, being well organized, uh, making sure that, that everything is attention to detail, both with, with what we're presenting to the players, with uh, the organization of it with the players, and then getting them to perform at a high level with high energy and effort. Those are the most important things. Those are more important than the scheme. And, and scheme is important, don't get me wrong, but, uh, but being well organized, uh, getting guys to perform as close to game day on a daily basis as you possibly can, uh, those things are things that I certainly learned from the, the great men that I had the opportunity to work with and for throughout the, the past 16 years. And those are the things that we're putting in place here. Mark was um, at Michigan a couple of years in the Big 10, and it's going to be a Big 10 opener, tough way to start at West Lafayette, Indiana, ross Age Stadium against Purdue. Are you going into that game nervous, excited, a little bit of both individually? And what do you think your team feels like? Uh, well, me personally, I'm, I'm both nervous and excited, obviously. Uh, I'd be lying if I, if I said I'm not a little bit nervous. It's going to be my first game as a head coach. And, and so it's the first time that we're on public display. Uh, and I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with having some butterflies. Uh, I think it's a good thing. If, if you're a, a player or if you're a coach and you're walking into the first game and you don't have some of those butterflies, you don't have a little bit of nervous energy, uh, I don't know where your passion level is for the game. I don't know where your interest and excitement is for this game. So, uh, sure, there's some nerves. But, but we as a staff are, are excited. Uh, couldn't be more ready for us to go and play somebody else and put ourselves on, on display uh, on a national sta stage because we get the opportunity to play uh, on ESPN News, which will be be great exposure for, for the university, for the football program, um, and getting to go and, and play at Purdue in a, in a Big Ten stadium. It'll be an awesome atmosphere and, and one that we're very much looking forward to for Saturday. A quick snippet about Purdue. They were 2-10 and 
10 last year, that can be very misleading. A, the schedule they play. B, how many players they have back. If I take a look, nine off the offense starters back, nine defensively, some really good talent. So this is a veteran team that you'll kick off against. Absolutely, and they had several very close games uh, that didn't end the right way for them, uh, but they've got – certainly talent to be a very good football team this year. You look at uh, their offense to start, they've got a, a pretty experienced offensive line. I think they've got in that group 79 starts uh, total for that group of five, which is um, a lot of starts returning. Their quarterback was a, a freshman last year, and he did a tremendous job. He's a dual threat guy. He can take off running, make things happen with his legs, but he certainly does a great job of distributing the ball, makes great decisions. Uh, so he's going to be a threat and someone that we're going to have to contain. Uh, their receiving core, they've got a lot of guys back. Uh, their number one guy, the number seven, he had like 700 yards receiving. There was a couple games I watched where, where he took over the game. I mean, he was a guy that they were just feeding the football to in critical situations, and he kept finding a way to get open. Uh, so he's going to be difficult. And, and then their back is tremendous. Uh, Jones, yeah, yeah, the Jones kid, number eight. He is tremendous. He was a true freshman last year, and he's big. He can, you know, run you over. He can run past you. He can make you miss. He's certainly very, very dynamic. And what he was able to do as a true freshman, um, I'm sure they're going to feed him the football a bunch and, and try to take it right to us. But uh, they're very talented on offense. And then defensively, uh, their front seven, they, they've got a lot of uh, really good football players. Their starts up, up front in the middle. Uh, the Replogal kid. Uh, I recruited him out of high school, out of Centerville High School. I mean, he's tough. He plays hard. He's one of the best new linemen in the country. You talk about your team defensively. A lot of new guys there. Some guys have to step up off special teams units. But you have lost over 1,000 career tackles from guys left. Uh, do you feel good about how your defense has matured in, in summer work and now in fall camp? I do feel good about where we're at defensively. Um, we don't have a great deal of experience coming back. We did the numbers, and, and um, it's just uh, between 20 and 30 percent of our production is back in, in most categories. So we don't have necessarily the most experienced group. Uh, but I really feel like we've got a group of guys that um, – are going to play well together, that are good football players, and are going to make plays when that presents itself. So uh, we do have a handful of guys that have played a lot of time. I mean, Avery Pitt's a guy that's played a lot of football here. And there's, there's no better place to have experience than right up front in the middle of your defense. So he's got a lot of experience. Uh, T.O., he started a number of games last year, and, and he's got a lot of experience. Come back, he's strong, he's athletic. Uh, we're expecting a big year from him. Keontae Northington. He, he's been a starter for years here, and he's what a great story he is as far as uh, an in-state kid who came here as a walk-on and has had nothing but a tremendous career here. Uh, but then we're sprinkling in a lot of guys that, that maybe were sitting behind somebody or are new to the program but feel very confident that they are going to be able to play at a high level for us. So I'm excited about our defense. Super solid on special teams with your kicker and place kicker, both all conference. On offense, good battle at quarterback, pretty deep at running back, and you have uh, some new guys along with some returners. Uh, in the receiving core, and your line is fairly experienced. Sure, yeah, I, I think that we have um, a lot more experience back on offense, and, and you, uh, you started with the quarterbacks. I think that's where it always starts when you talk about uh, an offense, the guy that, that's pulling the trigger. We've got three very capable guys, and, and uh, they've been battling all camp, and, and I feel very confident that any of the three can go out there and lead us to, to victory this year. So we're excited about that group and, and what we're, the production that we're going to get from them, certainly. Uh, you, you next talked about the, the running back group. We, we've got, again, numerous guys, and that's a position that you need numerous guys. Uh, I've been in the stretch run trying to win a conference championship when you're on your fourth back. And we've got numerous guys that can go out there. Obviously, Ethan's a guy that had a great year last year as a freshman, splitting time. Um, but he certainly did a tremendous job last year, and he's had a great camp. We're excited about him. Uh, the receiving core, we've got a couple new faces, but Devin Borders is a guy that had a great fall camp. Uh, we're expecting him to have a tremendous year along with a couple other new guys that, that have joined us. Uh, one group that you, you didn't talk about was our tight end 
line group, and that, that might be one of the strong points of our team. Uh, we've got several guys there as well uh, that can play and play at a high, high level. Dan Crimmins, Dan Paul, Clayton Schmerber, Tyler Malone. We're, we're expecting a lot out of those guys, numerous guys that can go in and out and, and um, different weapons as well. Some of them are a little bit more physical. Some of them are a little bit better in the receiving side, but they're going to be a good group for us. And then offensive line wise, uh, we've got a number of guys coming back that have started games, which is great because uh, that's that's an important group that you have to have cohesion along that group because they have to work together as much as any position group on the field. And so a lot of experience back up front um, and then a couple new guys that are going to be competing and getting in there as well up front. Well, Coach Elder's team has also been busy off the field doing some heavy lifting on move-in day at Eastern Kentucky University as we welcomed 2,300 new students to campus. What was that experience like for your students and or for your players and fellow students and the coaches on move-in day? Sure. Well, well, we certainly want to engage our community as much as possible and our fans as much as possible, and that starts on campus. Uh, our fan base is going to start first and foremost right here on campus with the student body that's that's as important of a group as we're going to have as far as getting them to the, the stadium on game day having them cheer us on that's what's going to set up an electric atmosphere for us on game day so we want to engage them so that the freshmen that were moving in and the sophomores that were moving into the dorms we wanted to go out and and get face to face with them and had our guys out there helping them move in and, and so forth which was great because uh, we want to do as much as we can to engage the, the local Local community here at EKU, the Richmond community, and then all of our alums um, throughout the country. We'll be back with more inside EKU sports and check in on EKU soccer. But first, come along for a journey with EKU students as they expand their worldview. The idea for the culture immersion trip came about when Dr. Carter wanted to provide a better opportunity for our students to become a global citizen. We identified all the first generation students that had a 3.0 or above, and they were sent an invitation by email, hey, we encourage you to apply. I felt as a small town girl that I needed to do more. And when I got the email to apply to go, it kind of, it kind of turned my world around and I was very, very excited. We wanted to provide that opportunity for those students that really took the time to elaborate why this uh, trip was important. I'm a Spanish and international business major. Before I went to Ecuador, I wouldn't even order my food in Spanish, and I've been speaking Spanish for four years now. So I had to jump out of my comfort zone. I had to really immerse myself in the culture, use their language, use their gestures. It's really good just to push them out of their comfort zone and to know that it's okay to be different. It's okay that you don't feel comfortable all the time and it's gonna prepare them for the unexpected. I thought that I was getting this big free trip, you know, so I was super excited. But it became so much more than that to me. I became so overwhelmed with all the experiences. I loved especially going to the daycare. Like that was the main thing for me. I got very emotional there. Our activities in the daycare, I think, were the most valuable because we ultimately wanted to give back. I am not the most friendly person when it comes to children. <laughs> I don't deal with children very often, and I think that that was a really good experience for me. It really opened my eyes to how other people live because you could see their lives in those children. Me going to Ecuador, being a part of something awesome like that, it really makes me feel like I'm supposed to be here. This is for me. I'm worth it, you know? Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with a slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Just like EKU football, EKU women's soccer also has a new coach in Nick Flory. 
Nick, welcome to Eastern Kentucky Thank and you. off to a good start. You guys have won your last two games, including uh, two shutouts. Yeah, it's, it's been good. It's been a slow process. We've been uh, adding some new ideas that the girls aren't used to, but it's starting to catch on a little bit. So they've seen the rewards of it now working on the details. Um, you know, we're two and two. So coming off two losses to start the season, but two wins for this past weekend. So it's it's starting to get there. We're still not where we want to be, but it's we're moving in the right direction. I want to talk about the team a little bit more later, but let's talk about you first because everybody has a background. Mark Elder was an assistant coach for 16 years in football. You've been, after playing college soccer at UND, yep. uh, an assistant at two Big Ten schools to get you prepared for where you are now. Yeah, it's it's been a good experience. I, and the one thing I think I've – I've been happy with as I've gone to places and learned from people that have great knowledge. You know, so my mentors are, are some of the some of the best in the country, and had a youth background as well before then. So, the, the Big Ten experience has been one where you see what it's like at the with the the, the big schools. You know, with with the lots of money and things like that, um, where you're competing against the top in the country on a daily basis. So. It's been great. There have been great learning experiences, and it's something that, with the standard of how things are done, that we're trying to bring here. What is that you said about changing some things? Mm. What's the one thing as you looked at last year's team, and then you got all the uh, the women on yeah. campus? What's the one thing you really thought we have to tweak this to be successful? I think we've come in with a different playing approach, a playing style, uh, formation is is pretty standard to a lot a lot of teams too, but it's just how we do it. Um, you know, it's it, the system is one where we're very attack minded and we try to, to move the other team with our passes, you know, to keep them chasing the ball. And it's helped. I mean, we're, we're not, again, where we want to be, but we're getting closer. So that's the big thing. It's just the approach of how they played last year is a little bit different than what we're playing this year. Could I use the example of basketball where everybody likes to be a fast break team? In a, in a sense, um, we go side to side a little bit in, in our defensive half and then once the space is there, then we try to go forward quickly. So it's a matter of creating the space to go forward first, and then once it's there, then speeding up the attack. The win at home over North uh, over Northern Kentucky, yep. the win on the road over VMI. Emmy Carroll had a goal. Aaron Torrens had two goals. Cassie Smith had one, and your keeper, Anna Hall, had those two shutouts. So talk about your team, including those young ladies. Yeah, besides Anna, our back line has been fantastic. I mean, the, the two center backs we have, Haley Kemper and Casey Eckley, put in 90 minutes each for those games. Uh, we've rotated almost everybody else to the team, and we've come in with different lineups every game. So. Everybody is contributing, which is, is nice. We're not relying on 11 players. We're relying on almost the entire team. The midfield, Cassie Smith, and then we've got a couple others, Marion Walski, uh, Michaela Breon, you know, those three, and, and a couple others, uh, Allison Warner, Bailey Bounds. The midfield is where I think we control the field, um, being able to move it from side to side, being able to pick out the right passes to go forward. And then up front, we're getting great production from six, seven players that we just rotate through. So we're trying to use everybody so that when they come in, they're fresh and we can just throw fresh legs at the other team. Um, and obviously, it's, it's working a little bit now because of the goals that we're getting from those front three. Well, a lot of tourists like to visit Charleston, South Carolina, and Nick Flory and his soccer team will too, but to play soccer against the Citadel and Charleston Southern. Another big weekend before you come home for Western Carolina. Yeah, we're playing in the Nike Challenge Cup. Uh, they, they do this between the two schools, and they'll do it again in a couple of weeks. Um, so it's, it's going to be a good experience. We've got a couple of alumni that live in Charleston that I'm hoping to come out you know, and, and spend some time with us. And uh, Charleston as a city is a great place to, to get a little sightseeing in in between games. Um, the Citadel is something, you know, they're in a situation somewhat like we are where they're coming off a year that wasn't sort of to their liking, you know, but they've got things turned around a little bit already where they're 2-0 they're and o coming into our game. Um, so it's another good test for us to see where we are and keep getting better. Coach, <clears throat> great to have you on campus. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck the rest of the season. Appreciate I'm sure we'll it. visit again here on Inside EKU Sports. Well, EKU athletes aren't the only ones gearing up for the season. Take a look at how the class of 2020 trains to cheer on the Colonels. Traditions Night is athletics opportunity to introduce the general student population to athletics and the many traditions that we do hold as far as game day experience goes. 
Traditions Night is really focused on our fall sports season with cross country, volleyball, soccer, and football. We go through the pregame routine. We have the, the marching colonels play EA Eastern and Hell Hell Eastern Maroons and you know all of our different fight songs, Fanfare, My Old Kentucky Home. And then we get into those in-game traditions, whether it be this is the song that's gonna play on third down. This is the song that's gonna play when the team runs out of the tunnel. And it's those traditions that we think by teaching them will help create that better game day experience uh, and hopefully will lead to, to more wins. Uh, but even more than that, it's an opportunity to introduce our head coaches and some of our student athletes. Having students that are familiar with the EKU traditions, it helps us get pumped for our games knowing that they support us, that they're there for us. I think for our student athletes, the uniqueness of having their peers showing up, especially new students, it's a big deal. And um, we perform better when uh, we get a big crowd and, and our students and our pep band and everyone are behind us. As a cheerleader, it's a great feeling when the fans yell with you and they're louder than you and they're getting involved and it's like awesome. There's something about the electricity that students bring. Uh, they're loud, they're young, they're energetic. And our student athletes look to their peers to help carry them uh, on whatever field of play they're on. And I think the fact that we've won the Commissioner's Cups that we've won, we've won the national titles that we've won, we've competed on a national stage the way that we have, it kind of escalates those traditions and makes them relevant. Hurdle start the season Saturday, Ross Aid Stadium, West Lafayette, Indiana. High noon kickoff for the Boilermakers and the Colonels. Mark Elder, your first game as head coach. I've got to ask the one question that every fan wants to know. Who's your starting quarterback? I bet I'll find out noon Saturday. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, check us out, ESPN News, 12 o'clock. Uh, tune in and you'll get to see it. We always make a big deal about quarterback, but every position has a battle. Who's your starting tight end? Who's your starting left tackle on offense? Who's your nose guard? So do we make too big of a deal in football of the quarterback, or is that the one position that has to be solid, in your opinion? Uh, well, well, I think that there's certainly a lot that's put into that. I, I look at the quarterback position probably a lot like the head coach position. When you, you win, you probably get more credit than you deserve, and when you lose, you, you probably get more negative than you deserve in, in that capacity for the quarterback. So uh, as far as that's concerned, it's obviously a critical position. I think it's, it's the most important position on the field as far as if you could single out one spot because the ball is going through his hands every single play and the distribution of it is, is through his decision making. Uh, so it's extremely important, but you're exactly right. There's an awful lot made out of that when there's 10 other guys on offense. There, there's 11 guys on defense and, and um, those positions are extremely important as well. Now the difference is, is that there's a little less rotating typically done at the quarterback right. position. A lot of the other positions you can roll guys in and out. So I think that's part of it as well. But um, probably a little bit more hype is put into that than what needs to be. Heat is going to be a factor. I know you've talked to your guys in situational scrimmages about handling, hydrating for this game. It's going to be hot. But you've gone through a hot fall camp. Yes, well, I've looked at the weather and, and I think that we're more than prepared uh, because we've been through days where on the turf it's been over 100 right. and it's been humid and our guys have been sweating like crazy and it's going to be nowhere close to that from the weather forecast that I've seen. It's, it's going to be high in the 80s, uh, so we should be more than prepared for that. I think that that will be a positive for us because we've we certainly trained in, in some, some hot weather, uh, probably a little bit hotter weather than what they've trained in just geographically. Mm -hmm. Coach, good luck for Colonel Nation. I know we're all behind you. Thank you. It's going to be fun. Absolutely. Can't oh, wait. All right. Season 104. Mark Elder at the helm now of the Colonel football team and keep up with EKU sports wherever you are. Like and follow our channels on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Inside EKU Sports.